Hi. In this video Q&A, we will discuss a recent paper on circulation during exercise in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease. I am Shafak Miroğlu from Turkey. My guests are Marietta Theodora Kopulu, the lead, or, or lead author of the study from Greece, and Amarilis van Kranenbroek from Belgium, who is an expert of this topic. Welcome both. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, Safak. Good afternoon. First, let me summarize the paper in a minute. The study aimed to examine cerebral oxygenation during a mild physical stress in patients at different CKD stages and controls. And 90 participants, 18 per state CKD stage 2 to 4 and 18 controls were included in this study. Cerebral oxygenation was assessed. Uh, during a three-minute intermittent hand grip exercise by near-infrared spectroscopy. And as the results, in the results, EGFR was found to be independently associated with oxygenated hemoglobin response during hand grip exercise with a decline in cognitive scores, physical activity, hand grip strength, and cerebral oxygenation with advancing CKD stages. The authors concluded that a brain activation during a mild physical task appeared to decrease with advancing CKD. So, Marietta, uh, as far as we know, this is the first study evaluating cerebral oxygenation with near infrared spectroscopy during exercise in patients with different stages of CKD and compared to a control group. Uh, how do you interpret your findings? So thank you very much for your question. Yes, indeed, this study uh, showed for the first time that cerebral activation and mild physical stress is reduced with advancing CKD stages, as suggested by the smaller increases in cerebral oxygenation and the regional uh, blood volume. The associations observed between the different cerebral oxygenation indices studied and the indices of cognitive function, uh, indices of muscle strength, and the uh, physical activity levels indicate that decreased cerebral oxygenation may at least uh, partially contribute to both uh, cognitive impairment and uh, exercise intolerance observed in uh, patients with advanced uh, CKD. Regarding this matter, uh, Marietta, can you elaborate on the pathophysiology of both uh, cognitive impairment and exercise intolerance in our patients? Okay. Uh, we know that the cognitive impairment and the exercise intolerance are common in uh, our uh, patients, in patients with CKD. The underlying pathophysiology uh, be behind these conditions is multifactorial and involves uh, several mechanisms with the most of the factors being common in both cognitive impairment and exercise intolerance. So we have micro and microvascular dysfunction, including loss of endothelial integrity and decreased arterial stiffness, as well as sympathetic nervous system overactivation that have been suggested to play major role in uh, this uh, phenomena. In addition, there are also CKD related factors, for example, metabolic and electrolyte disorders, accumulation of uh, various uremic metabolites, as well as anemia that increase the risk for dementia and decrease the exercise capacity of patients uh, with CKD. Finally, it has been suggested that there may be a role of uh, other um, disorders such as depression or sleep disturbances in the pathogenesis of this phenomena. Also, uh, this relationship and the direction of uh, these uh, two uh, entities remains unclear. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the near infrared spectroscopy is it's a little bit interesting, I think, to use this methodology. We don't use its uh, we don't see its use very often. Um, why did you choose near infrared spectroscopy, and can you tell us how it works, what the advantages and limitations of this assessment tool are? So yes. Uh, NIRS is a relatively new method that can measure both cerebral oxygenation and regional blood volume 
at rest and after stimulation with different tests. It is based on a simple law, the Beer Lambert's law, which states that the absorption of light through any medium is proportional to the distance of the light that has to travel and the concentrations of the chromophores. Within the near infrared uh, spectroscopy range, the main light absorbing molecules are hemoglobin, bilirubin, and cytochrome. So the wavelengths of the near light used in the different uh, commercial devices are sensitive between uh, 700 and 850 nanometers, where the absorption of the deoxygenated and oxygenated hemoglobin are maximally separated. With the NIRS, the NIRS device detects the relative changes in oxygenated, deoxygenated, and total hemoglobin and provides us with uh, crucial information regarding the tissue oxygen saturation and thus the brain activation in a specific region. The major advantage is that it provides continuous recordings and can detect in real time rapidly occurring alterations in cerebral oxygenation. It is infected by emotion thus enabling us to use it during exercise and can assess multiple brain areas sim simultaneously. With regards to the major uh, limitations of the method, uh, it is uh, vulnerable to different light artifacts and there is a penetration limit in its uh, probic depth, so it can um, be used more for more superficial parts of the brain for the cortex. Uh, finally. Uh, compared with other techniques used to measure cerebral perfusion, such as uh, the MRI techniques, the NIRS collects information uh, about only the superficial parts and only in the localized areas where the NIRS optodes are applied. So, Yes, Marietta. Uh, so you, you just told it that uh, NIRS uh, tests the more superficial parts of the of the brain. Um, so with this testing the microvascular uh, part also of the brain. So do you think that uh, assessment of the of the bigger vessels like the carotid artery and the basilar artery uh, would give you um, more information or were you interested only in the or essentially in the microvasculature? Yes, uh, as uh, uh, already mentioned, the, the NIRS measure oxygenation in the cortex. On the other hand, the MRI techniques, the MRI of the carotid or the basilar arteries, focuses on visualizing the vessel themselves than, the, than directly measuring uh, oxygenation in the brain. So MRI can provide information about the anatomy of the vessels, the flow characteristics and the presence of any structural abnormalities or, for example, some stenosis. So MRI can help us assess the degree of the vascular pathology and uh, the potential impact and restricting blood flow to the brain, indicating any abnormalities in cerebral perfusion and not direct to the oxygenation of the brain. So with regards to studies uh, with MRI, there are already two studies in uh, the field examining cerebral perfusion with uh, MRI techniques in patients with pre-dialysis CKD, but uh, with non-uniform result. In one of them, uh, GFR was inversely associated with uh, cerebral uh, blood flow, while in the other one, cerebral blood, uh, blood flow was decreasing in parallel with GFR degrees. So, um, in my personal opinion, I believe that uh, depending on the design of the research, we should use both NIRS and MRI techniques as they can provide the different insights into cerebral oxygenation and vascular health. It's contributing to different pieces to the overall understanding of uh, the pathology. Thank you, Marietta. And finally, <clears throat> we know you both, but uh, can you briefly tell us where you currently work, what your main interests in nephrology are, what has driven to you, uh, driven you to research, and what do you like to do outside of medicine and research in life? So I'm currently a resident in uh, the first department of nephrology in Hippocratia Hospital uh, located in uh, Thessaloniki, Greece. And uh, my, I'm interested in uh, cardiovascular disease in patients with CKD, 
And the factors associating with CKD progression, including hypertension and diabetes. Uh, with regards to um, the second part of this question, uh, I'm interested in clinical research for, for many reasons, including personal and professional growth and improvement of uh, my patient outcomes. And my involvement in uh, clinical research helps me to expand my medical knowledge and stay updated, enhance my skills. And uh, I believe that uh, I can contribute with this way to the scientific community. And uh, with regards to the last and uh, question, uh, outside of medicine and research, I enjoy spending time with family. I enjoy spending time with my friends. I love cooking, traveling, and taking many photos. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you. You love cooking. Great. Yeah. That's Did a you ever cook, cook for your dialysis patients? No. <laughs> so that can be a plan for the future. Yeah. I Maybe. have to use uh, less salt. You you, <laughs> should, you should check the ERA cookbook. Yeah. I was going to mention okay. that too. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Um, dear Marietta and dear Amarilis, uh, thank you a lot for joining me in this session. And this one was good. And I hope the, the forthcoming... Uh, videos with the young authors uh, will be good as well.